let's have a start off with the intelligence. I mean, everyone's been saying to Israel, OK, you've uh, gone inside hospitals, prove to us that that was necessary. Uh, has Israel been able to do that? Well, not really, not to everybody's satisfaction. I mean, the, the, the truth is that this, this war has been going badly for Israel for some time, and it's going beginning to go very badly indeed. They're losing the media war, the propaganda war, if you prefer, which is amazing given uh, the awful attack by Hamas terrorists on the 7th of October, the fact that over 200 hostages are still being held by Hamas. Nevertheless, uh, what it looks like is that the Israelis are killing lots of civilians, um, 1,200, uh, 12,000, that kind of figure, but very few Hamas fighters. We're told that 75% of the people killed are women and children. Now, no way of verifying that, but it's probably true, given the way uh, the Israelis are bombarding and bombing Gaza, but the fact is only 25% of these people are males suggests the males are somewhere and the Israelis aren't getting to them. So the evidence they've produced from the hospital is scant in the extreme. Uh, there's no clear sign that the intelligence failure that precipitated this war in, in the first place is, is being addressed. In other words, we still can't be confident that Israeli intelligence is actually telling the Israeli Defense Force where to fight. We're told that the Israelis have dropped leaflets in the south of Gaza telling people to, to get out of the way. That is also ridiculous because they just told people in the north of Gaza to go to the south to get out of the way. So, yes, they can do stunts in the sense of bombing these huge bombs that can uh, take out 20 foot worth of concrete, a uh, hundred feet of earth. Yeah, that looks, looks great. Maybe they get a, a few commanders. They say they've got the chief of Hamas there. But actually winning the war, that they're not doing. And when it comes to fighting in these tunnels, that's man-to-man -man fighting. All the bombs in the world aren't going to enable the Israelis to have a victory. And meanwhile, international public opinion is turning against them big time. That's really, really problematical. Um, and Anthony, given that uh, Hamas don't want a ceasefire either, and Israel's position is quite clear, you know, unless you release all of the hostages, we won't even talk to you. I mean, in the real world, is there a snowball's chance in hell of a ceasefire in this awful conflict anytime soon? I don't think there's uh, any chance of a real ceasefire, no, for the reasons that you give. However, unless the Israelis can have a substantial breakthrough, unless they can win the war for public opinion, which I say I think they're losing and lost, uh, then the pressure on Netanyahu, who I think is a crackpot, to be perfectly honest, uh, he, he rushed into this after the massive intelligence failure that caused Israel the most damage ever, um, he rushed into this uh, revenge attack using ridiculous rhetoric, talking about animals and turning people into rubble. And now uh, there is no proof, no firm proof, that there are these Hamas centres under the hospital. It's a wonderful, wonderful idea that they should be there, but why aren't we seeing them if they're there? And the little, you know, the arms caches they found, they would be consistent with armed guards in, in the hospital in any case. The lack of male corpses, awful thing to say, but that is in itself significant. So when you add all these things together, you are drawn to the conclusion that it may well be in Israel's interest to have a humanitarian pause that turns into a ceasefire. And again, think about what Israel said. No ceasefire without having the hostages back. But you can have the hostages back and leave Hamas intact. If your <laughs> aim is to destroy Hamas, then you've got to destroy Hamas, not worry about the hostages. So, you know, it's a huge muddle. And there are many voices in Israel now saying uh, Netanyahu has got to go. He's in no fit condition to conduct this rushed, precipitate campaign. And I, I, I think that, it, it, you know, we're, we're moving to a stage now, no ceasefire, 
as you say, can't be a ceasefire. Those uh, Labour MPs are just, it's a knee-jerk response to their Muslim voters, and, and, and it is, is, is deplorable in a way. Of course, we all want the fighting to stop. There's no question about that. We all want the killing of civilians to stop. But a ceasefire isn't the way to do it. A humanitarian pause might do it. And, you know, there are many instances in history where ceasefires have gone on for years and years and years. So uh, a humanitarian pause, which ultimately might lead to a ceasefire when the hostages are returned, that could be one way of ending the carnage. Uh, I want to ask you about Iran in all of this, because uh, when those atrocities took place on the 7th of October, there was a lot of conjecture that uh, Iran was potentially behind it, helping Hamas to coordinate it, at the very least egging them on. Um, and uh, a lot of UK intelligence reports suggesting that Iran at least has some hands to play in this info war that's going on, surrounding, as you were saying, uh, you know, the propaganda, essentially, that Israel is losing. And yet today, we've just heard from Ayatollah Ali Khamenei that uh, Iran didn't know the 7th of October attacks were going to happen and don't want to get involved. What do you make of all of this? Well, I wouldn't believe a word any <laughs> Iranian official said, even if I asked him for the time of day. Uh, I don't think anybody serious doubts that uh, Iran has trained and funded Hamas fighters over many years. And I don't think anybody doubts that the weapons that have found their way into Gaza, despite the blockade by Israel, is another you know, very inefficient thing. Because people say, oh, Gaza was occupied by the Israelis. Well, actually, it wasn't occupied. That was the problem, that it wasn't occupied. And as for the blockade, it didn't work very well. We've seen all these tunnels uh, that could take stuff in. So I don't think there's any doubt. But you are right that... Uh, Iran and other, and Hezbollah, its revolutionary army up in the north, uh, have not intervened. And that's very big. And people like me did think that there was a real chance that there would be a much more general war, a regional war, and then a more general war, a, a chance that this would happen if Israel won a kind of knockout victory. Well, it hasn't won the, that knockout victory so far after about a month of fighting. And the other thing to note is that President Biden and above all, Anthony Blinken seem to have kept people out of it, which is excellent. And as far as Iran is concerned, of course, they don't yet have nuclear weapons and Israel does. And I suspect that also focuses the minds mm. of the Ayatollahs uh, on internal repression, <laughs> but not having a war. Quite. Yes,